As the First World War entered its second year, both sides realized that such a large-scale battle was not just about the combat capabilities of the troops, but also about the industrial capacity and mobilization capabilities of the countries. Despite both sides producing weapons and equipment at full capacity, the original combat system established before the war was beginning to struggle with heavy weapons such as artillery. The military needed more efficient mobile equipment than mules, horses, and tractors for towing. Thus, the concept of self-propelled artillery began to mature. At that time, France was also developing self-propelled artillery, with a relatively clear design concept. They first determined that the artillery should be carried by a tracked chassis. Then, the initial classification idea of heavy self-propelled artillery and light self-propelled artillery emerged. The achievement of the former was the saint chamond self-propelled artillery, equipped with a 194mm or 280mm gun, modified from a tractor chassis, while the latter was a self-propelled artillery modified from the FT-17 Renault light tank. In 1917, the FT-17 light tank began mass production, and the development of self-propelled artillery based on its chassis began immediately, with some achievements in the following year, including the proposal of three prototypes. The first prototype was tested in September 1918. It was a version equipped with the M1897 field gun, with a caliber of 75mm due to the small size of the FT-17 itself, only 4.2 meters long and 1.74 meters wide, the designer installed the gun upside down at the rear of the vehicle, as the rear of the vehicle was the engine compartment. The gun occupied the original position of the turret, with the barrel facing backward and able to adjust the elevation between minus 4 degrees and 24 degrees. Ammunition was stored in a box above the engine compartment, with a capacity of up to 40 rounds. This prototype proved that the FT-17 was a reliable mobile platform that could withstand the recoil of the gun. However, the military believed that there were still structural deficiencies, such as the placement of the ammunition, which made it vulnerable to enemy attacks in combat. The second prototype learned from the first one's shortcomings. The designer made adjustments to the chassis structure, removing the front part of the chassis and moving the driver from the front to the middle of the vehicle. The space in the front was used to add a gun mount, and a 75mm gun was installed in this space. Compared to the first prototype, the gun was positioned lower and could be adjusted within a 360 degrees firing arc. However, to fire at an angle of more than 10 degrees, the gun still needed to be aimed towards the rear of the vehicle. The gun crew operated the gun in the open fighting compartment at the front of the vehicle, and the vehicle could carry 120 rounds of ammunition, enough to support a day's worth of firing based on the intense combat demands at the time. The third prototype was relatively conventional. The designer moved the engine forward, creating space at the rear for the installation of the gun and a fighting compartment. The gun was forward-facing, with a horizontal firing arc of 11 degrees and an elevation angle of minus 5 degrees to 41 degrees. The vehicle could carry 90 rounds of ammunition, and the rear platform was appropriately expanded later on. In addition to these three self-propelled artillery prototypes, France also considered installing the M1913 105mm howitzer, and developed an ammunition transport vehicle based on the FT-17 chassis. The driver was also moved to the middle of the vehicle, with the front space used to store ammunition, creating a space of 1.5 by 1.05 by 0.9 meters. However, only one of these prototypes was produced, and its limited cargo space meant that it could not carry much ammunition. The development of these light self-propelled artillery pieces did not continue to completion. On one hand, the surrender of the German army shortly thereafter meant that France's immediate priority was to recover and recuperate in the aftermath of the devastation, and there was no longer a need for self-propelled artillery. On the other hand, there were internal disputes in France, with some officers stubbornly insisting that artillery should be towed by horses, with an upgraded version using tractors or cars for towing. Using a tracked chassis to build self-propelled artillery was seen as an unnecessary and wasteful expense.